hop on board. Today we head west for a most unique ringneck road trip on rails. Oh, we're just getting here. And where we hop off, the dogs are on point. Flush, presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Pheasants Forever. A sign tonight's trip is definitely different. Where in Montana you guys going? Glasgow. That's where we're getting off. Who says ringneck road trip travel can't be cushy? I was going to say we're back on the road again. That's not true. All aboard the Amtrak with this guy. Try and tell me you don't want it to join on four cheese pizza right now. Pheasant hunter Sean Keating. I hadn't been on a train for 15, 20 years. <laughs> for me, being on the train is like being a little kid again. Amtrak's Empire Builder rolls out of Minneapolis about 10.30 each evening. Guests can explore quiet cars, relax a bit, and just watch the world pass by. Eight hours of sleep. Tomorrow, we hunt. It's a good run. You know, it's, it's scenic and you get a little sleep and you wake up and watch the sunrise over North Dakota. Riding the train is the coolest. A North Dakota landscape leads to Montana's wide open skies. And like that, we find ourselves jumping off in the town of Glasgow. We're just getting here. Feels like the trip's over and it's just starting. Sean and I grab our guns at the local sports shop and then zip 20 miles to our next stop. We're headed to a place called Milk River Outfitter. It's just a real short drive over to the Outfitter and that first night, we're hunting. Yeah, just a little spy, just roaming around. Funny, but Milk River guides always have an eye out for the deer. Big game is the big game on the ranch. But guy Jason Saunders has a soft spot for the birds. Got a call, somebody was looking for a guy. And next thing you know, I landed in Hinsdale, Montana. This place is known for having some of the biggest deer in Montana, but they have a little side business too. We hope to find pheasants out here somewhere. Ringneck pheasants flourish in Montana. These birds often have access to endless tracts of widely untouched habitat. This is birdie country. You're not to the Rockies yet, but you're kinda in the hills and the undulating cut wheat fields. We've come a long way. We're happy to finally be here. You know, I've never hunted Montana, right? And you come out here, and it's more vast than you ever thought. Jason walks us into a small piece of habitat along the river. He's never hunted here, but thinks we might see a bird or two. Here they go, here they go. Or three or four. Welcome to Montana. Jason trains dogs back in Ohio when he's not guiding. He hopes his latest dog, Chap, might help us wrangle a few birds. Chap is an English Springer Spaniel, 19 months old and more than ready to hunt. That dog's got energy. He's very typical to breed. You know, just so loyal and so energetic, stylish, 
uh, enthusiastic, and just, he likes pheasants as much as we do, so. <laughs> sure does. Gotta get used to that. Chap gets right on that bird. Here. Here, here, Chap. Can I help you put that in your vest? I got an athletic ability to me. <laughs> <laughs> breathe, breathe. Yeah, this vest. Do, do not let it get out though. Okay, let's see if we can make a little of the tail feather left stick out. Nice job, John. Nice, nice job. job. Good job, buddy. Let's do that about 50 more times. <laughs> yeah. Only off the train for 90 minutes, and it sure seems like we're right on track in Montana. Get it? The Flush, brought to you by Federal Premium Ammunition. Every shot counts. Benelli. Polaris, Waltons, and by North Dakota Tourism. Mister! Good shot, Sean. Young bird? Yeah, yeah, we drop our first Montana pheasant and get right back to work. We hoof it along Montana's Milk River. Booster! Booster! That one there was just as exciting as the first one of the season for me. Bird guy Jason Saunders shows off the ranch's floodplain habitat, tucked in neatly alongside the river. Not bad for the first 10 minutes. Jeez. Booster! Second barrel. Come on now. The bird went down. Did it? Just crashed down. I haven't been in that kind of terrain where it's a little more coolie and levee and timber in it. This isn't like South Dakota hunting where you're going to flush 40 birds at the same time. You're going to pick up a bird here, a bird there, a bird there. But our action has been steady down here all day long. Which is why we decide to beat it back to camp for dinner. Social hour only lasts 30 minutes with food spread like this. Ham, homemade scalloped potatoes. It's a, it's a working ranch. Food's gonna be outstanding. The views are gonna be endless. You know, lodging's an old ranch house that's kept up, clean. You know, we promise to deliver on all that. Anything that you need, we're gonna work our butts off to get for you. But it's a working ranch. And it just feels comfy. <laughs> Maybe that's why we all fade away long before the cows come home. Oh yeah, and the horses too. Best kept secret right here, Northeast Montana. You don't like the weather display right now, it'll change. I know, I've seen it. <laughs> Montana silence greets us second day hour. Just gonna run all the way, start here and run all the way down. Cool. Come on, cheer up. Cheer We're in Montana. It's a beautiful day in Montana. Come along the Milk River. That's Dan Bailey, Montana's Pheasants Forever rep. He loves to hunt. So do his dogs. That horn honking is Dan's dog just trashing the inside of the truck because they're freaking out. They're not on hunt. We're chasing pheasants, and Jason says, I got a couple of spots I think you're going to like. Ever feel like you're being watched? I'm hiding behind you. Beef blocks us from our birds. I ain't walking through them. Oof. El Jariso. 
Ain't no bull. We can see around the corner. Look at that. A whole herd. Uh, I mean, flock of pheasants. So we backtrack and decide to sneak in from another angle. Feeding roosters in the middle of the day are some of the most challenging birds to hunt. You know, it's hard to get into range on them. You see them. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you'll get close enough there they go. to shoot. Look at them all going the same way. At least we know where we pushed them. Him. Rooster! Rooster! These Montana pheasants suddenly seem to have our number. I got my muck boots in the truck. The rascals like the mud. Just be prepared to deal with a little bit of water. Very symbolic of my shooting at the moment. Knee deep in brown stuff. Recent rain has this spot soaked. It's great. It's wet. I've never seen Montana wet before. Is this fruitless? Here you go, cameraman. I got you that far. Thanks, man. If we can muck through this field, I have a feeling this hunt might just get back on track. Rooster! The Flush. Brought to you by Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks, and Tourism. Birchwood Casey. Pier, South Dakota. Carlson Choke Tubes. And by Rough Tough Kennels. Seems we get stuck in a rut this morning in Montana. I know what it feels like to walk in your legs, Sean. It's mid-November, but unseasonably warm and wet weather makes this hunt feel like an October affair. There's been some localized areas where there's been some, some hail damage and some flooding, um, but overall the bird numbers have really responded well. Which is why... Rooster! Rooster! Montana roosters put us in a good mood. What the dog's for, Sean? <laughs> Batting 333 all of a sudden. That gets you a contract in baseball. If you can just get birds in cover to where they can't see you so well. Rooster! You can put them in the air and gun range. Ten, ten. It takes planning for a successful hunt. Rooster! What'd you get, coach? River bottom rooster. That's a dandy. And what a wicked like hunt. Yeah. yeah, I've never been through something. It's like still that. morning. It's all just one little morning so hunt. That's our two hour hunt to Milk River. This afternoon. Who's this? It's Jewel. <laughs> we feel it all right. Got our wind. Prairie storm is coming on. The forecast suddenly calls for the first blizzard of the year. So we're gonna hunt while we can. And funny thing, guess what we keep seeing in our birdie spots? Is deer coming through? I've seen more deer in three days in Montana than I may have seen in my life. Just a little, little two by two. In all seriousness, was anyone else not shocked by this deer? In my opinion, that sums up pheasant hunting and, and bird management in Montana. Montana is a big game state. A lot of times, the upland game bird stuff does not, you know, rise up to sort of management concerns as some of those bigger animals. And... But that's the point. What's good for one can sure be good for the other. They've got good habitat for mule deer and whitetail, and, and the birds thrive off of that. You know, as wildlife habitat is wildlife habitat. Good for the deer, is good for the pheasants, and vice versa. Uh, every time I hunt with Dan, the same thing happens. Rooster! 
got that one. Dan can shoot, boy. You want to talk about not missing? I don't think I saw him miss a shot. Nice shot, Dan. Nice one shot. Are incredible. One shell, Dan. That boy can shoot. Well, that was eventful. Yeah. Nice shot. I knew he was working first. Don't think I need to say much else. Montana. To see it every single day, it's, it still refreshes me every single day to see it. It's, it's, it's endless. Which is why we want to sniff around tonight. That is the fun on these trips. You just never know what you're gonna run into. Like Montana's most modest historic site, they say it looks like a sleeping buffalo. The sleeping buffalo rock perpetually rests along Highway 2, and visitors must love it based on the sheer count of tobacco offerings left behind. There's a skull bandit. <laughs> and just behind the rock, another legitimate hotspot that shares the same name. It doesn't look like much from the outside, but once you get indoors, holy hot springs. It is like nothing I ever imagined. Montana's sleeping buffalo hot springs. Legitimately, this place is unbelievable. 92 in the big pool, 107 in the hot tub. Owner Dennis Simpson brought this place back to life. Wildcat Rigger first discovered the scalding hot spring while searching for oil around 1920. Montana cowboys came from all over to clean up in this hot water. Just stonework and millwork and, you know, redwood cedar in the middle of nowhere. Field of dreams for a hot spring. <laughs> if you build it, they will come, I guess. I would not come to this part of Montana without visiting the hot springs, legitimately. Which is why we'll take a break while Sean and I relax a bit. Great hunting stories begin with great habitat. Join Pheasants Forever today to help us create more upland habitat for the birds. Sign up at this special web address below and you'll receive a one-year subscription to Pheasants Forever Journal, plus this Pheasants Forever Edition Browning Double Blade Knife with the Collector's Tin. Sign up today to help us create healthy habitat and abundant wildlife. Seems Montana bird hunters have plenty of room to roam. <laughs> Just look around. You know, you ask, what are we hunting? How much land you have to hunt? It's 20,000, 22,000, 6,500, I think is the smallest number we heard. <laughs> Needless to say, Milk River Outfitters won't keep you cooped up. Bird guide Jason Saunders has spots. Ready to do a little hunt? What are you doing, girl? You ready? You know, Montana, there's so much of it. It still refreshes me every single day to see it. It's, it's, it's endless. That. Finally, the weather's changing. Word is, blizzard's coming. Our last day of hunting brings change. Even with the water, we're hitting all this different habitat, and there's still birds around. Hunter Sean Keating has been on his A-game the entire trip. Ah! Oh, I get fired up when I hear a twig go off somebody's chaps the wrong way because I think it's a bird getting out. <laughs> it flips my head around still. <laughs> you know, when you, when you hunt hard uh, and the birds are good, when you get an opportunity to, to get one, you want to make sure you don't miss. And he hasn't missed much. <laughs> Big surprise. Jason's got another for us. You know, it's funny because towards the end of the day, we're about limited out on pheasants. And then Jason says, you know what, I have an idea. 
you drive up into the hills above the ranch and decide to walk the farm road to nowhere. Well, let's just see what happens. We hoof it straight into the wind. Nothing happens. Just get ready to call it. I just see one across the road up there by that sign. Did you? Going which direction? Left or right. Jason thinks we might bust a nice covey of sharp-tailed grouse, one of my favorite game birds. Sharpies aren't native birds that tend to fly forever when they flush. They are savvy birds that scare easily and keep an eye out for hunters. This time of year, they flush early. To cross over or no? To do whatever it takes. <laughs> that is weak leadership. Go get the truck. <laughs> I think at this point, I have guided you to the birds. So, we beeline right up the road. Like that, they're gone. They flush 125 yards in front of us. Sharpie. Did you hear them laughing at us? We're gonna save those guys for our next trip. For now, we enjoy the view. Something, isn't it? And the journey. I'm good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm good. Good day. And to think, the best part is still ahead. We've got a train to catch. I don't think anybody will ever truly appreciate Montana until they see it and breathe the air and see the endless sky and hear the roosters cackle at daylight. We have had so much fun the last 48 hours. Don't forget I told you. <laughs>